Alrighty, everyone. Uh, it is 2.35 uh, as agreed upon. We're going to start at 2.35. Uh, I intentionally wanted to give everyone at least five minutes as a grace period uh, so, to, so they could get here on time. Um, as everyone knows, my name is Salim McDowell. For those who do not know, my name is Salim McDowell. I am the Director of Assessment. I would definitely like to thank every single one of you for attending today's workshop slash event, which is um, as titled, Grasping Concepts Within LMU's OAs. Um, formerly known, well, yeah, formerly known, known as outcome assessment reports. Uh, before we uh, get into the substantive aspect of today's workshop, I just want to go over a few um, housekeeping matters. A total of four things, for the most part. Um, one is the intro, uh, you know, the name, as I mentioned. Um, the office. I am the director of the Office of Institutional Effectiveness, OIE. Please keep in mind that OIE serves four general functions. One is strategic planning. Two is institutional research, three is institutional assessment, and four is accreditation, in particular, aiding the uh, vice president of academic affairs with accreditation. And also, although um, I work in the office of OIE, also um, John Moore works in the office of OIE as well. He is the assistant director of institutional research. Um, so that's definitely one thing I want to get out the way so everyone, we can all be on the same page. The second thing is actually, I only asked three things of you today, at, to, uh, three things for today's workshop. One is patience, uh, two is attention, and three is eagerness to learn, um, evidenced by your willingness to participate. And as the workshop goes on, you'll definitely understand exactly what I mean by participation. Uh, the third thing that I would like to uh, go over is the overall purpose of today's workshop, which is to continue to improve um, the understanding of outcome assessment reports. Um, as most people know, program chairs slash directors of an administrative program or, or academic program have been responsible for outcome assessment reports. Although, um, as a leader of that precise program, you're di directly responsible, there should be multiple people involved in the um, finalization of these reports, whether it's four or five professors, three professors, all your faculty members, depending on the size of the program. So I just believe it's very important that we are all on the same page in terms of that. And then uh, the last housekeeping matter is just in, just in regards to questions. I will definitely be addressing questions throughout the workshop, but I would like everyone to uh, ensure that whatever question you have pertains to the uh, slide at hand, just to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're not necessarily jumping back and forth unnecessarily. But if we have to, you know, I definitely will do that. So let's officially get started in the sense of discussing what's on the slides. Um, as we're all professionals, uh, we, I'm pretty sure, I think it's presumably safe to say that we all like some sort of words of wisdom, whether it comes from parents, friends, colleagues, even students. Um, so these particular words of wisdom are from Dr. Mark Salisbury. A central tenet of the student learning outcomes movement is that higher education institutions must articulate a specific set of skills, traits, and or dispositions that all of its students will learn before graduation. Designed appropriately, a well-organized sequence of outcome assessment snapshots can provide information vital to tracking student learning over time and potentially increase institutional effectiveness, also known as IE. Um, also, there are a few more words of wisdom. I hope I have a few Star Wars fans in the room, because I know I'm definitely one of them. Please bear with me. So, as Yoda said, the number one Jedi in the universe, do or do not. Do not try. Do or do not. I intentionally wanted to um, communicate this to everyone because just after meeting with all the program chairs and directors, I know there has, been, uh, there has been challenges, reasonable challenges, which is definitely understood, hence the reason for this workshop. But as the Master Jedi, uh, Jedi says, do or do not. Do not. Do not try. Do or do not. So when you approach the outcome assessment reports, let's just keep this in mind. As professionals, as leaders, um, let's not just try, but let's do or do not. Um, and let's always aim for excellence, just like our wonderful Jedi friend Yoda does. All right, also one thing that I definitely wanted to address in terms of culture of assessment, um, well, in terms of improving the culture of assessment is defining applicable terms. Um, Philip Smith. 
Would you mind just reading this slide? Philip, for those who do not know, is the director of the QEP, Quality Enhancement Plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, Juhi, would you mind reading this slide? Thank you very much. And before I move on, I'll just uh, briefly recap. So a few applicable terms are culture, assessment, slash assess, institution, as well as effectiveness. And the fifth uh, applicable term is educational assessment. Uh, Mr. Larry Thacker, Dean Larry Thacker, would you mind reading this slide? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to focus on a few words um, from this slide and relate it directly to our wonderful Jedi friend, uh, Yoda. Um, the second line states, part of the quest for improved education, in particular, quest. For those who know about Star Wars, um, becoming a Jedi and, of course, imparting your knowledge to other people, to other societies, to other organizations, to other institutions, it's a quest. Um, my, my, my perspective, especially considering that I just love Star Wars and I love to include humor at times, we are on a quest to improve the knowledge of students. No matter where those students derive from, no matter where we derive from, our ultimate goal is to improve the overall academic and quality of the students' experience while they are here at LMU in particular. Who enjoys X-Men? The superheroes, X-Men, Juhi, who else? Dr. Sellers, anyone else? All right, so I hope y'all know, y'all just uh, chose yourself to partake in a, a little journey right now. So especially Wolverine and Cyclops. Um, Juhi, would you like to be Wolverine or Cyclops? Wolverine. Wonderful. Dr. Sellers, that means you're Cyclops by default. All righty. So let's say the individual, if we start from the left uh, hand side of the screen, the individual with the hair protruding downward is Wolverine. Uh, we know that Wolverine, his hair protrudes upward or sideways. But just for, you know, illustrative purposes, this individual is Wolverine. And let's think about a few of the characteristics of Wolverine. Wolverine tends to be, at times, aggressive, uh, ve um, revengeful. Um, however, despite those two characteristics, he is a leader. And let's say the individual with that baseball cap is Cyclops. If we're using our imagination, let's just say that the hat is Cyclops' uh, glasses, which uh, his glasses, as we know, as X-Men fans, is used to um, you know, prevent the gamma rays from coming out of his eyes. Pause. Now keep in mind, Cyclops and Wolverine are both leaders, leaders that share the same interests of protecting mankind humans, mutants. The analogy, how I would relate it back to us, is that despite where we come from, despite our particular le leadership styles, we are of the same interest of ensuring that students improve their academic knowledge. So now with the last statements, let's just keep in mind the characteristics of Wolverine. He's aggressive, um, but of course he serves a purpose. Um, Cyclops is more of the ideal type of leader where he's always, um, always thoughtful. He wants to take the time. He's very strategic, analytical. Uh, Wolverine is as analytical too, but they have two different types of approaches to displaying their leadership. But, oh, I'm about to use your gamma rays. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, so keep in mind that, you know, although these are definitely two leaders, their interests, which are very noble, um, they have two different ways of going about being leaders. But despite their two different ways, this, is, this whole scenario is focusing on the same concept. Uh, who would like to read this slide? Dr. DeBra. Yeah, Thank you very much. All righty. Um, are y'all ready to start your intellectual engines? Um, the journey of grasping concepts within LMU's outcome assessment reports shall begin. Um, now, what I would like everyone to do, uh, you, everyone should have a blank copy of the outcome assessment report, 2013 through 2014 edition. The next two slides, for the most part, will be relatively straightforward. Um, after the academic and operational goals are reduced to writing, Form 1, Column 1, include the applicable university goals. 
So where would those goals be included? In terms of form one, right in column two, place of location, you can find these uh, the university goals on LMU's website or the undergraduate ca catalog to the 2013-2014 edition, uh, precisely on page seven. Does anyone have any questions so far? All righty. The next slide, after, um, it's, it's redundant, but of course for a purpose, um, this one is if you want to locate the university strategic goals, the place of location is the school's website and two, LMU's 2014 through 2019 strategic plan from pages 76 to 144. All righty. Now we are becoming um, more substantive slash comprehensive in terms of our discussion. Form two, column one goals. It is imperative every goal is measurable. If not, the goal cannot be assessed. Someone may ask, Salim, what do you mean by measurable? And guess what? I will respond, that's a great question, young Jedi. Um, a goal is measurable if after a particular instrument slash assessment method is implemented, there are results which determine whether the goal has been achieved. In other words, this is assessment of a goal. Goal should start with an action word, in other words, a verb. A good example which derives from um, Masters of Education and Counseling, improve human growth and development. And the reason why this is, a, it, this is a good example is because one, it starts with a verb and it generally encompasses um, a very uh, precise topic within the field of counseling. Are there any questions so far? All righty. Form two, column one, objectives, if applicable. And the reason why I say if applicable are for reasons that we will soon find out. Think of an objective as a particular activity which is an ongoing process pertaining to the overarching goal. So if everyone's, well, everyone was to think of it conceptually, you would have a goal that's very general, and then your objective will be the continuation of that goal. And of course, I'm pretty sure as everyone has heard me say, and uh, even if you did not mention it or not, you probably want to, wanted to throw pens at me, um, this all revolves around semantics to a large extent. Um, it is imperative every objective is measurable. If not, the objective cannot be assessed. An objective is measurable if after a particular instrument slash assessment method is implemented, there are results which determine whether the objective has been achieved. In other words, this is assessment of a goal. And you may be thinking to yourself, you know, okay, uh, what we read for goals, assessment of a goal is very similar, if not exactly the same as the assessment of objectives. That's a great thought that you have. Keep in mind that, um, Assessing a goal or objective, the concepts are going to be the same in terms of exact, exactly what it means to assess an objective or goal. So objective should start with an action word, in other words, a verb, just like uh, a goal should. A good example of a objective is uh, develop an understanding of developmental aspects of human growth and appreciation for the nature of human developmental behavior. And if we just look at the prior goal, improve human growth and development. So that's a goal. And then the objective for that particular goal is develop an understanding of, of developmental aspects of human growth and appreciation for the nature of human developmental behavior. So just putting it into practice, um, the goal is very general and then the objective is a continuation of the goal. Oh, it, that's a great question, it really is. It definitely can be um, referred to as something else other than an activity. Um, ultimately, what will be the determining factor really is your discipline. Because um, I try, I did my best to, to use examples, concrete examples, uh, to the point where we can all understand, this, uh, uh, just considering the fact that we are all of different disciplines. So of course the approach that's taken has to be understood by all. Um, so if anyone has very precise questions, which of course are always welcome, please feel more than free to uh, wait for me after the workshop um, or contact me via email, call me, or we could just schedule a meeting. Because uh, that question that you asked, Dr. Bro, is very important. Um, but for terms of the workshop, it cannot be sufficiently answered to the extent that we would all be satisfied, because considering the different disciplines. Are there any questions with that response? All righty, thank you. Think of an expected outcome as a benchmark for a goal and or objective. Knowing these two factors, one, an objective, and two, expected outcome slash benchmark will aid in accurately understanding 
whether the particular objective has been achieved after applying a specific method, in other words, assessment. I know that's a lot of concepts in one, sent in, um, in one statement, but just keep in mind everything that has already been mentioned in sense of uh, goals, objectives, and now we're discussing expected outcomes slash benchmarks. So even if you have all your information, say in uh, uh, form two, column one, you have your goal, then you have objectives underneath that, the best way to actually understand whether your results have been achieved is knowing what exactly is your expected outcome. Because let's just say if you do not know what your expected outcome is. Yes, you have results. You think you have achieved them. But the best way to determine if you have or not is knowing your outcome. Are there any questions? All righty. Also, think of the expected outcome slash benchmark as being the reasonable prediction of the objective slash ongoing activity or any other synonym that uh, we would like to apply for the outcome assessment process. However, every goal need not have an objective. In other words, having a goal and expected outcome will suffice. So what I mean by that is you can have a goal and just your expected outcome. The reason why the objective may not be um, important, prevalent, applicable, is because the, the, if, you're, if your outcome is on point, is as direct as, is, as it possibly can be, then there may not be any need to include the objective. Um, from my perspective, it's great to just include it because the way I see it is that it's truly an analysis where you're taking it from step to step. So why, why, um, why not include that information where you can have a holistic view towards um, exactly what you're, what you're trying to assess? Are there any questions about that? Because that's very important. All righty. If an expected outcome is too broad, it can be made into an objective since expected outcomes are a benchmark, which should speak to a particular narrow slash detail predictions. Having a narrow slash particular outcome is important for the OA process because it will become an ideal indicator in ascertaining and definitively knowing the level of success after knowing the assessment results. So that just repeats uh, what I said a few moments ago. And uh, a good example um, for an expected outcome considering the goal and objective that we already mentioned is developmental case study of at least one child or adolescent. Initially, I was, I was having just some difficulty trying to determine whether I should include this um, as an outcome for, for us to discuss as I was looking through the outcome assessment report for this program. Um, but it's important to, to know that this is a good outcome because it's very direct, it's very clear. After you put everything into its proper context, and what I mean by everything is the goal and the objective, that the, the precise outcome for that objective slash goal is going to be um, the student having at least one child or adolescent case study. Does everyone understand how it shows? Well, the statement in itself, you cannot truly understand how it shows until you look at the results. But you have to keep in mind, it's a very detailed logical process. So if, you ju if you're just looking at the information standing alone um, by itself, then uh, it, it will not do the entire uh, assessment process justice. Yes, Dr. Summers. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. And um, everything that Dr. Josford mentioned is absolutely correct. And the way everything comes together in one is through the results. Um, so just putting it into full perspective, you know your goals, you know your objectives, um, you know your outcome. And then the next step in the process is having your results. And not just having your results, because in order for, for a program to have results, you have to be accurately aware of your assessment methods. So once you have all these concepts, um, in the right frame of mind, right perspective as is needed, all the information will be um, presented for itself. And all the comments that was mentioned from Dr. Sellers and Dr. Josfer hits the nail on the coffin, without a doubt. And that's a, that's a very good example. Um, the statements that you just mentioned addresses several things um, at once. Uh, of course, um, objective, uh, expected outcome, and then the results, and as well as assessment method, uh, because uh, it goes back to semantics, where if we're able to recall exactly what we want to do, and, we, and then we reduce it to writing, everything just becomes up as apparent as possible. It's just that we all have to keep in mind, we cannot look at, we cannot approach this, this journey, this task, from just looking at it from one lens, which is, say, for example, the lens of a, an objective. 
we have to, of course, think of an objective while considering how the objective falls into the complete entire picture. So an analogy that I have is a puzzle. It's very much like a puzzle to the extent of, yeah, you know one piece, but how does this one piece relate to the entire puzzle to complete the puzzle and have a, just a, an a ecstatic, phenomenal type of puzzle? Any questions? Any other questions? Everyone, please do not hesitate to ask any question that comes to mind, no matter what it may be. Thank you. Um, if an expected outcome is too broad, it can be made into an objective since expected outcomes are a benchmark um, that I mentioned. And OK, so the very last example was developmental case study of at least one child or adolescent. Everything that, um, that was discussed is certainly as applicable as possible to expected outcomes and, of course, the other concepts that we have discussed. Form 2, column 3, assessment, method, and results. This column must be written in the past tense. Think of the requirements for this column like an equation. Assessment equals method, methods, plus results. Any questions? OK. Remain detailed yet concise within your assessment analysis. This is the most important aspect because the analysis explains how each goal and or objective is assessed. If there is no data for a goal, and or objective, explain the reason in column three and concisely include how it will be resolved in column four recommendations. And I just want to spend a few more seconds on this um, precise information because uh, just reviewing reports with program chairs and directors, there was a lot of conversation about, okay, we had this goal, a very good goal. We had a very good objective. We knew our, um, our ideal indicator, the expected outcome slash benchmark, but we didn't necessarily assess the information. Of course, it's always good to have results. But if you can include the reasons why a goal was not assessed, that's still good assessment. Um, because directly from the main source, which is SAC COC, I only include them because in order to give a sufficient answer, it, they have to be included. They say that ultimately, as long as you're providing some form of assessment, that you're assessing information, although the results may not be um, as, as appreciated as, we, as expected what we would want, that, that's assessment. Um, so I definitely don't want everyone to be alarmed because some goals have not been, been assessed. However, I will say, this, this is a stipulation. If there's a goal that hasn't been assessed for five academic years, then that's just something that we have to speak about because that's just, um, that's not being prudent, so to speak. Um, but if, if, if there's assessment of a goal or uh, to some extent and you can include the concise details, then we're doing our job as young Jedi masters. That's a great question, and that's, that's, a, that's a valid question of valid concern. Um, practically, based off of conversations, I do think that it's a fear. It's a valid fear considering the culture um, of the institution. We just have to assess the situation for what it is. We all are professionals. I'm here to tell you and promise you that these reports are not here to demean you professionally, to take your position away from you. However, another stipulation, if there's a program chair or director who intentionally is not um, doing their best to complete their reports, then just as any professional, reasonable efforts will be taken. And that's not me. I don't say that to be malicious, mean-spirited to any extent. Just as a professional, that's just what happens at times in the professional world. Um, but that in no way means that, um, that the numbers that's included within the reports will be used against you. We have to keep in mind that the overall purpose of the outcome assessment uh, process is to continue improving the academic quality of our institution. And the only way we can do that is by being honest with ourselves as professionals, with our programs, and then with each other. Because uh, one great thing about programs that have excelled with outcome assessment process, uh, there has been enough transparency, at, le at least with the administrators within the institution, that other, that an admi administrator from another uh, program has the ability to look at, um, say, programs X outcome assessment report. So they could gain some sort of quality Based feedback to continue improving their program to remove that sense of fear. I know that was a lot at once, but it definitely serves a purpose. And I definitely do not, um, if I can't control it as a professional, I, I definitely do not want anyone to feel in fear um, of including numbers. And that's another reason, practical reason why um, we're having this workshop uh, so we can continue improving upon just what we have to do as professionals in, in a positive light because uh, I definitely don't want to be negative. 
that is not my intentions to any extent. However, we just have to be the professionals that we are and find ways to continue building upon uh, what we currently have. Great question, Larry. Thank you. Any other questions? All righty. Column four recommendations. This column must be written in the future tense. The information from this column is derived after knowing the assessment results from column three. Think what suggestions and or improvements can be, can be implemented due to the assessment results. So for the most part, this slide is straightforward, but does anyone have any questions whatsoever? All righty. So a good example, or uh, yeah, a good example of a recommendation uh, could be analysis of related CMAS rubric provides evidence for only 64% of students demonstrating knowledge of at the capstone level and theories for facilitating optimal development and wellness over the lifespan. This concept will be taught more thoroughly in this course in the future. And of course, this derives from MED and counseling. I think this is a good recommendation for several reasons. It addresses continued growth of the program. It's definitely not trying to um, hide the numbers, and it's being very direct. It's saying that, you know, 64 is not a horrible result, but we still want to do our best to um, fine tune situations. An analogy that I would like to use is um, whether we're a sports fan, um, a, a, music, a musical fan of some so sort, um, you always want the person that, that, that you like to strive to be better. So in, just in terms of basketball, I'm an, I'm an avid basketball fan. So if my team, the New York Knicks, was to win the championship for 10 straight consecutive years, I don't know if that will ever happen, but it will be great. I would not want my team to just you know, um, end up being satisfied with 10 consecutive years. Why not find ways to continue tweaking the basketball program so we could win 11 consecutive championships and you know, go, go further, win 12, 13, 14 consecutive championships. It has been done before, the Celtics, not 10 years maybe, but the Celtics, the Lakers, teams have done their best, um, whether in baseball, basketball, et cetera. And there are programs, whether it's academic related, um, professional related, that have done their best to gain recognition, um, national um, rec recognition to, to, to a large extent. Um, so why not just always aim for the best? Any questions? Form three, general purpose. The form ensures that the program is consistently and adequately engaged in continuous improvement throughout three consecutive academic years. And a lot of people have had questions about this form. Um, I think it's just great to keep in mind that form three en encompasses three years, which is an invaluable thing. Um, and the reason why it's invaluable is because if someone was to, any reviewer, whether it's someone from uh, someone from the School of Education, someone from, the, from Math and Sciences, if they decided to take a look at an uh, outcome assessment report for um, criminal justice, they could just look at Form 3 if they want, if they choose to, and realize the type of progress that, ha that has occurred throughout three consecutive academic years. So I think this form is um, fabulous. However, this form cannot be completed unless prior year's forms have been completed, which speaks directly to the importance of constantly um, improving your, your, your reports, because it will be reflected in, um, in Form 3. Yeah. Dr. Tellis, thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to focus on a few words that you said, which um, is, is fantastic. It does not show everything in the world. Um, that's, a, that's actually another valid concern that a lot of program chairs, um, directors have had. How am I supposed to reduce everything that I, that I do to writing? We actually do not have to reduce literally every single detail to writing. However, we are responsible for accurately reflecting the quality of our program within these, within these pages. And of course, the only people who can accurately do that are the program chairs, the leaders of the programs, and of course, with the help of, of faculty members. Um, so thank you very much for, for, for including those words. And th thank you for saying that. That leads us to the next slide, a great transition. <laughs> Include the recommendations from the prior year. This information comes from Form 2, Column 6 of the programs always from previous year. And the reason why I say column six, although what you're currently looking at um, does, not, does not have a column six is because if, you, if we pay attention to the note, after this academic year, 2013, 2014, the information for this column will derive from form two, column four of the programs always from prior year since the forms were revised. So practically speaking, when you're filling out, the, um, when you're filling out form three for this academic year, the information 
in column one will derive from form six, I'm sorry, from form two, column six of last year's outcome assessment reports. But if we fast forward a year, because you know JEDIs, we can possibly do that at times. Um, so this time next year, it will be 2014, 2015. So the information in form three, column one will derive from form two, column four. That was a lot of details at once. So if anyone has any questions, you know, please. Uh, that, that's a great question. Um, and of course, uh, you don't have to, well, with my response, I'll preface it by saying, you don't have to listen to what I'm saying word for word. However, keep in mind, I'm here to add, to give suggestions, advice. Um, so I believe a good approach would be, you know, definitely doing exactly what you mentioned. And to even, uh, um, to, to explain it further, have a goal a goal that explicitly pertains to that change and the reason for that change. Um, and just, of course, it goes back to semantics. Make it relate, depending on how things are phrased, um, make it relate so everyone, so objectively, a reviewer can understand why the sudden change. Because although from the outside looking in, it may appear to be a sudden change, as you know, it's definitely not. And the only person that can know that vividly would be yourself. Um, and I say that to explicitly state that's why it's our responsibility to ensure that whatever communication, whatever we are um, stating is well understood to the naked eye, so to speak. Uh, th thank you, because um, I, I remember the, uh, the meeting that we had with uh, Dr. Paris. Um, so I would say, because this goes back to um, the very fine, minute details and how you know things will vary based off of discipline. And the best way for us to address that um, of course, in a very productive way would be to sit down and just to hash everything out. Um, I love to use this, this example. Uh, last, acad last summer, um, you know, I sat down with uh, two program chairs in the School of Education for five hours, and we just hashed things out um, to make sure that we were all on the same page, that there was as much clarity and transparency as possible. And if that's what, what we have to do, then definitely let's get it done. Let's get it done. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Sellers. Uh, two programs come to mind. Um, uh, school of Nursing, generally, and then uh, the, uh, Social Work. So social, uh, social Work as well as School of Nursing are both, they both have their own respective accrediting agencies. Um, so just practically speaking, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of conversations. How do I reduce all of these requirements um, that ensures my program has a good quality program to include within the outcome assessment reports? It sounds like a, like a um, daunting task, but it can be done. And the way it was done was, you know, we sat down together um, for an hour or two, several hours if needed, and we figured out, we figured out exactly how to, I would, I would like to say, uh, like create somewhat of a hybrid form um, where nothing was lost within the outcome assessment reports, but at the same time not recreating information. So one concrete example that I have is, say, the School of Nursing, they may have 89 accreditation requirements. It's not, it's not necessary to include all of those requirements within the outcome assessment reports. However, if, say, five of those, if, yeah, let's say 89 of those, of those requirements can be concisely included into six main goals and then con a continuation of objectives, that's a good way to create some sort of hybrid form, which will, be, which will certainly serve justice for the outcome assessment process. The only way to get to the final product, product would be for us to sit down, hash everything out, me just literally use all of my legal skills, being concise, being analytical, um, cross-referencing information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that fun, painstaking, but joyful type of stuff to ensure the great quality of our programs. Um, it's a lot, but it's all worth it. it de it's definitely all worth it. Juhi, thank you very much. I, I think what Juhi mentioned is uh, Juhi, Dr. Sellers, um, Dr. Jock, all these statements, all these comments are definitely very invaluable. Um, in particular, Juhi's comments, uh, the, just you know, literally reducing a lot of information to six goals that reflects um, the, the, the comprehensive um, quality of the program. And then after you have those six goals, then including, um, you know, continue, continue to include information that pertains to those goals. It's not easy, um, it's definitely not easy. It takes time, but it, it's, it's well worth the effort and it can be done, it certainly can be done. It, uh, I would say that leads me to just a few points, transparency, clarity, communication, certain skills that will be addressed in the uh, following workshop. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? That is a great question, and that question pertains directly to uh, accountability. Um, I, I think it's a great question. As of now, um, what we did to somewhat compromise 
with accountability is um, at the bottom of the form, you'll see, or bottom of the form on each page, you'll see completed by on the far uh, left hand side. So um, it will be great to include the main person who has to sign off on the report, so to speak, and any other people who are responsible in the completion of the report. Um, just practically, it may be challenging to the extent of there may be some programs where only three people uh, were actually just a part of the conversation of outcome assessment reports, but then at the same time, there may be another program where 10, 12 people were, um, were a part of that conversation, um, whether it was a formal outcome assessment committee responsible for completing these reports or informal type of uh, committee. Um, so I believe the best way to resolve that as of now is definitely including the person who ultimately signs off on the report and then you know the top two or three people that were responsible for uh, completing the outcome assessment report. Yes? I, I love that question. That's a great question. Um, the best answer, the honest answer, the, on, the honest professional answer is that no one should be completing these reports by themselves, regardless of the size of the program. Um, outcome assessment reports um, speaks, di well, the outcome assessment process, assessment process, institutional effectiveness, in particular, outcome assessment, you know, pertains to um, collaboration. I think that's the best word to describe it. If there is no collaboration in a program, not to say that the program is poor, but there's something going on to the point where collaboration is needed. It's definitely needed for the completion of outcomes, outcomes assessment reports. Although it may be challenging to get people together to have conversations about outcome assessment, the more it occurs, the, uh, the more the quality will end up increasing. Um, there are pro I I've been doing a lot of research since I've had this position. There are programs that it's clear, at least we could go based off of what's being provided to us, um, but just at least based off of literature, it's very clear that there is collaboration. And it, it can be done. It may be painstaking initially, but it can be done. It can be done. We just have to work together by communicating, um, by being collaborative, um, by being understanding, patient, and uh, being the professionals that we know we are. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Any other questions? All righty. Uh, form three, column two, include the actual implementations and or results based off of based off last year's recommendations. Include the recommendations for next year, which is derived from the results in form three, column two. So that's the very last uh, column on form three. And I have a baseball example that uh, this this example actually was discussed when um, I met with uh, Lisa Cox um, during last summer. Of course, you, uh, we, we were having a very good, um, very good conversation about outcome assessment process. And then, you know, I was racking my brain trying to come up with analogies, examples. So I came up with this example, and she loved it. Um, goal, Derek Jeter, a shortstop on the New York Yankees, wants to become one of the best baseball players in the major leagues. Objective, DJ aims to become an excellent home run hitter. So precisely, what does he want to do? He wants to become an excellent home run hitter. Um, expected outcome slash benchmark. He will hit 60 home runs. Assessment. Although DJ ran, jogged, and completed 100 crunches every day to increase his strength and endurance, these would be methods of measurement. He played 165 games and only hit 48 home runs. That's not good for him. <laughs> Detailed results of the assessment. Although 48 home runs is still good in major leagues. Uh, recommendations. Since DJ was 12 home runs shy, he plans to utilize the same methods of measurement but will start a nutritional diet, including consuming healthier foods and drinking less beer than he usually does before a game. Yeah, I just included you know, that for the humor purposes. Um, does anyone have any questions about this example? All right. Huh? Oh, yeah. He's, so DJ is actually retiring, retiring this year. Hopefully, he won't be drinking too much beer before games. <laughs> All righty. And that, that's a joke, everyone. Um, I'm not saying that Derek Jeter drinks beer before games. All righty. Uh, think of applicable terms. One culture, two assessment, three institution, four effectiveness. The ultimate purpose of all four, four workshops is to continue improving the overall culture of assessment throughout LMU via institutional effectiveness. The end for now. Thank you all for your time. Actually, actually, wait, 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 there's a pop quiz. There's a pop quiz. 
Um, the first question is, what is the difference between a goal and an objective? Um, I'll just run through them. Um, how can having a narrow slash particular outcome aid in ascertaining whether a goal and or objective was achieved? Is every form important? Although every column is necessary, which is the most important and why? So the answer is, uh, and of course, uh, what, everything that you said, Dr. Sellers, is absolutely correct. Um, a goal is a general plan. An objective is a particular activity, et cetera. A narrow slash particular outcome serves as a benchmark. And three, I have a big smiley face because is every form important? Of course, every form is extremely important. And uh, although every column is necessary, which is the most important, um, form two, column three, since it contains the assessment analysis, which is the crux of the report, and the end, really, I promise. But before you go, I have one last, uh, one last link. All right, everyone, thank you very much. <laughs> everyone, thank you very much for your for your time, for your patience and your willingness to um, just be here and to speak up and to in improve the collaboration um, amongst our institution.